by nearly 40 years of engagement in banking and finance in this country. I've been engaged in developing entrepreneurship uh, at the micro, small and medium level and then the commercial and complex level. Uh, we were talking about the entrepreneurship and nearly 70 years of engagement on the multilateral agencies like the IMF, IFC, ADB and all the other countries to develop entrepreneurship or particular SMEs. SMEs in this country in the last 70 years have not prospered. We just have a few commercial uh, listed companies only. The reason being the number of them. One is what I see is the there's a big difference between self-employment and entrepreneurship. There is a lot of people think self-employment is entrepreneurship. It's not. Entrepreneurship is totally different. It's a journey that you will take on to a large engagement to create um, impact for the, the, the country or the people through economic empowerment. The entrepreneur is always a long journey. And in that journey, he takes lots so much of risk. And, and particularly when it comes to social entrepreneurs, there are people who are responsible with accountability for the people and the planet. They want to make sure that they are making profit out of the people and the planet. And they need to really make sure that the people and the planet has to be taken care of, the environment or the society. Uh, if you don't, you are making profit out of the society and the planet, and if you are not really throwing back your profit back to the society and planet, there is no sustainability for your business. So the businesses can cannot uh, grow exponentially in respect to what happens to the country. So that's why the true entrepreneurship is that. Now we are talking about um, one of the reasons that Vladik also mentioned about the high cost of access to finance. In this country, uh, for entrepreneurs are uh, in this engagement, uh, the price of debt is very high for an entrepreneur. Now when it comes to micro and small and medium levels, they pay the highest price. At the micro level, 25% to 75%. At the SME level, between 16 to 24%. And the corporate sector, of course, have the benefit of getting both 9 and 12% uh, prime rate. So how can an entrepreneur only depends on the bank finance and start to provide his business? That's the reason that uh, no business at the micro, small and medium level can survive, live alone thrive, borrowing at these high rates. And that is why countries like um, other countries that have blossomed, entrepreneurship, countries like uh, Netherlands, uh, Norway, Israel, uh, USA, and any other country, they have uh, really, what they have done is, they have created access to equity, private equity. Now, there is no private access to private equity in this country for micro, small, and medium level entrepreneurs. And that's one of the reasons I co-founded and pioneered the Ad Power TV reality show. I think I know some of you have seen it. There is no access to private equity because there has to be, even in countries like USA, the entrepreneurship is blossomed not through bank lending. Even Stephen Jobs and Bill Gates started their enterprises in garages, not through bank loans, but investment options. Even Elon Musk recently sent a rocket to the space. 18 investors committed their private money for that engagement, not bank loans. So it's important that we need to create a framework. Now we are talking about the policy. The policy, if it doesn't lead to an actionable framework, it only should go to the museum. It's just a document that will go to the museum. So any policy has to really lead to realistic, actionable framework. And that framework should create conditions for various stakeholders to be empowered to do what they need to do for the sake of development of the country economy. And when you talk about entrepreneurship in this country, they talk about 90% of the SMEs are privately run, not government. Of course, government run big, big businesses, big enterprises, government runs. And the government does not run small and medium level enterprises. That's in, entirely in the hands of the private sector across the country. And these entrepreneurs, these normal entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs, 
they need to really gain power. And for that only that there has to be significant policies that Dalit mentioned has to be in place, not to go into the museum, but to make sure the actionable engagement and a framework so that, that we will create empowerment for the entrepreneurs so that they would be able to stand on their own feet. For some reason in this country, though there are engagement through IHC, IMF and ADBs on SME development, SMEs have not blossomed. The reason being, people are talking, there are a lot of talk shows about SMEs, but when it comes to creating conditions, people don't walk the talk. And one of the major conflicts are the private sector, corporate sector, yeah, because they don't create the value chain for the SMEs. So ladies and gentlemen, what I want to tell you is that we need to create a policy that create a framework and a framework that create a facilitation for the entrepreneurship empowerment, whether it's a, whether it's a social entrepreneur or no entrepreneurs. And particularly the social entrepreneurs are so vital for this country because they would ensure that the safeguarding of the people or the society or the planet or the environment in their enterprise. Though they may be making profit or some of them may want, not be making profit. But whatever it is, that they would be having a priority to safeguard or develop and the nurture the planet and the people, people in the society. They will not sacrifice the planet and the people for the profit. For the profit has to be brought back to the development and enrichment of the planet. Then only the people and the planet can progress. So, ladies and gentlemen, that it is so important in this country. Now, I've been a banker for nearly 40 years. And the bankers, if you look at, making unprecedented profits. Now, if you look at all the banks put together, they would make about probably 300 billion profit. When the economy is negatively growing, how can a banking sector grow? Unprecedented margins and a profit generation. It's not possible. So that's why the, there has to be a framework to make sure, from even from the regulators, the bankers engage in responsible lending, responsible access to finance. Not only banks can only lend, they can give equity. And there has to be a framework creation in this country through multiple engagement from public sector and the private sector and institutional mechanism so that there is opportunity for private sector investors, in fact investors, put their funds, private money, into development of the entrepreneurs and the small, micro, small and medium level. Because the corporates can go to the stock markets and raise capital, but the, the SMEs cannot do that. They have to depend on money lenders, finance companies, and banks. So that's why it is important the public sector. Now, this is what is happening in countries like Germany, in Israel, in, in uh, other countries. There is significant collaboration between the private sector, public sector, institutional mechanism to empower entrepreneurship. And one of the key things that they do is create opportunity for access to private equity at the small and medium. In this country there is nothing. Only all the entrepreneurs in this country have, whether are social entrepreneurs or normal entrepreneurs, they have only high price debt, either from finance companies, money lenders or banks. So we need to change these dynamics. And in this context, you who are ladies and gentlemen, the leaders of the public sector, when you are making sure that you are creating ideal conditions to bring policies and we have to ensure that policies create framework for action and that act framework should create facilitation for the empowerment of the entrepreneurs, not only access to finance, access to equity, access to markets, access to nurturing, but making these entrepreneurs more viable, commercially viable, as well as uh, scalable in their business. And that is where we want to make sure that in this country, now we have done that. Actually, British Council should be applauded for the kind of initiative they have done for the last 10 years. And Dr. Lalit Bilbalki in this area to develop that. And that is where we need to not only develop and nurture the social entrepreneurs, as well mentioned, but also other side of the coin is impact investors. Impact investors are not money lenders or the bank lenders, they are investors. Now, as I said, most of the entrepreneurship in the world develop through not bank loans, but investments. All these small, micro level, small level, global investor uh, entrepreneurs has emerged as a result of the some passionate impact investor 
connectivity. And we need to create that. And Lalit also mentioned about credit guarantee fund. Now this is where the public sector and private sector can come together and create credit guarantee funds. And also leave alone the investment to the investors. But you create the facilitation through the proper framework. And the private sector investors are willing, they have the funds in this country. And actually to as power, we bought, I bought about 20 leading businessmen to invest their private money into social entrepreneurs that equity, not loans. That is possible. There are Sri Lankan leaders in this country who are willing private sector businessmen who are willing to put their money. But you need to create the framework policy that will lead to action of actionable framework. And the framework that can create facilitation to empower entrepreneurship in a bigger way so the entrepreneurs can not just the way of uh, social uh, self-employment, but an entrepreneur can blossom to be very commercially viable and business scalable uh, enterprise that can probably become an exporter, uh, eventually exporting some of the things in this country. So ladies and gentlemen, we are committed, Lanka Impact English is not founded for that, and we are committed together with all the other stakeholders, make sure, create that condition and you who are leaders of the public sector, and we are willing to collaborate and partner to ensure that this important other side of the coin is there for the empowerment of social entrepreneurs. Thank you.